What's up, y'all? This is the Adapt or Die podcast, a podcast that explores new and relevant ideas for the purposes of self-growth and helping you live a more fulfilled lifestyle. My name is Armel Tala. And my name is Ben Smith. We're two university students pursuing our own journeys of self-growth with the hopes of sharing our findings with you. I think it's time for us to now dive into a little bit of the science the science behind this time, like let's we we we've, we've talked about the philosophical approach. We we've pondered, you know, the great anybody. If you meet anybody and they say, "I've been pondering," this, <laughs> they're a philosopher immediately. Only philosophers use that word. But we've pondered upon the idea of time from a philosoph- philosophical approach. But I want to know, like, what's what is actually time? Like, what what do the sciences yeah, do so about time? I will say that the physics of time is it is it's almost hard to wrap my head around. Like, it's very difficult. And I've been thinking about, I've actually been, a, a, I've been very comfortable with these ideas for a, probably a few, not a few years, but a, a decent amount of time. And so some of the ideas we're going to present today are, um, they're very difficult to, to wrap your head around. So strap in. Um, we have some, some very mind-boggling ideas coming. Um, so let's, let's first start with, again, how we view time usually from, from a, a scientific perspective okay so we already established that time uh, we have a, a past a present and a future right and in, in our in our general how we view time right yeah. past is set present is you know kind of an elusive moving point yeah however we can that's a whole different discussion yeah. and the future is a mystery okay so the properties of our views of time is time is one-dimensional okay um, and the properties that it's the same for everyone okay so Six o'clock PM for you is the same for me. Obviously, you know, around the world there's different we, we call different six PMs different times based on our, our point on the earth Relative. or the sun. But th- those are just different numbers for the same point in time. Yeah. Right. We we all experience time at the same time. Yeah. You know, if you go to Asia for ten years and you come back, we're the same age. Yeah. Right. That's <laughs> that's we all we that's intuitive. Yeah. It's a very basic right. idea. It's a very ordinary idea. Uh, so time is one dimensional, okay? Time is the same for everyone. Stemming off time is the same for everyone. Time duration is also the same for everyone. One second of time is one second of time. Right. We all experience the world uh, one second per second. Yeah. Okay. That's another thing. Um, And the last thing is that we kind of define time as being measured by clocks, right? And the understanding time through clocks is going to be very important in this. It's going to be very important, right? Mm. So... If you, similar to how if you go to Asia and you come back in 10 years, you're the same age. If I take a clock, right, in our view of time, and I take it, um, and I, let's say I just hold it up above me, yeah. like, like just literally my arm's length. Our view of time would say that if we synchronize two clocks, right, and I hold one at my chest level and I hold one above my head, then, and I bring them back together, they'll be perfectly synced if I synced them before, right? Yeah. That's not how time works. Okay. Time does not function like that, At, and and it's a very hard idea to wrap around or, your head around. But we actually have atomic clocks that are so precise that we know that if we sync two clocks together and you raise it above your head, even just a meter, we can actually statistic we can actually measure the difference between the synchronization of the clock when you bring it back down to the original clock, that the different locations and height have a, a varying effect on the duration of time so these are when you're saying these atomic time these are things that are actually like we have like actually yeah, right no, now and, and atomic and clock, use. yeah it, it measures time down to i want to say i think it's 10 to the 18th mm-hmm. it's like one times 10 to the negative 18th sorry negative 18 that's a very yeah. <laughs> negative 18th seconds there's a very small point of time but if like i like i just said if you if you take two synchronized clocks mm-hmm. and if you walk to the, the third floor and you stayed there for an hour and you brought it back down mm. and we those synchronized clocks would not be in sync anymore. Okay. So, and that, so where, where are we so, going? So, yeah, it? so where are we going? The first there's there's kind of four properties of time that we're gonna talk about today. And I, I these come from uh, Italian physicist Carlo Rovelli. This is just kind of where I got these ideas from. And so the first thing is that time duration, the duration of time is not the same at different locations in space. Okay. It's a very, that's, that's an important, I, I think it's, it, it, 
it's a very hard idea for me to wrap my head around like honestly mm -hmm. because like think about like just think about that for a second like honestly like yeah, like it, it, it's, a, it's a very crazy like i i don't know why it's different but like i i can get i, I get it like i get like okay it's yeah. different at different times and literally two feet of movement actually changes time yeah and so and the reason why is actually because of general relativity um and so we know there are two things that that will slow or that will change the duration of time the first is massive objects so you know the earth the sun mm -hmm. black holes especially yeah. um massive objects when you go the closer you are in a gravitational field to a massive object um the slower time feels to you so what, what does that mean if i would were to go um near a black hole and you stayed on earth so I, I flew off in a spaceship i went to a black hole and i traveled close to the black hole and i came back yeah arguably or not arguably scientifically you could be dead when I get back. Even if I, my whole trip only took a year and mm -hmm. I only aged a, a year, you could, you could be dead. So <laughs> like that's how much, wait, wait, like so you could have aged all the way to a hundred. So you're saying and died. to you, your trip took a year, but right. to me it Earth, took a year, to you, it felt. But then when you get back to earth, did it really take a year from earthlings, from earthling people perspective? And so, yeah, this is, I guess this it's is the aging it, that tells if it took a year or not. Right. The aging, cause we all generally yeah. age at the same, same pace. And you know, we, we calculate that by how many times the earth revolves around the sun. Um, but that's, that's a crazy idea to me, right? That the fact that, that I can travel somewhere and gravitate, gravity can actually distort time and slow it down for me that when I get back, we're different ages. So that means time in one part of space is different than the other. There's no like yes. space. That's why space is so big, bro. That's why like there's nobody out there. That's why we haven't found aliens because they're on a different time than us. They're on a different time than us. That's really why. And, and we, we see this effect all the time too. Um, if you, so you kind of know how like our percept, like I see you because light hits my eyes, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm actually seeing is you about, you know, a few nanoseconds in the past. Now, obviously that's yeah. negligible, you know, that's effectively present. It doesn't matter to us. That's actually kind of crazy. So you're telling me this whole time, everything's delayed. Yes. By, by everything, everything delayed. is delayed by very, by minute amount to us. It's negligible. But when you get to a macro level scale, the um i think it's the andromeda the closest star to us if i'm, if I'm wrong about that don't don't quote me but um I thought the sun we, was the closest star to us not not that that star but mm. you, okay you're right yes <laughs> you're absolutely right um the maybe it's like i don't know like there's a big star my, yeah my point is saying Indra, the light that comes from that star when it hits us we are seeing that star four years in the past damn Okay, so that's four that's, years in the past. That's you know, so this whole time you're kind of you. I've, I think you've been wondering, okay, what does it have to do? Why do I care if time durations? Yeah, that's 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 one very not even a, that applicable application compared to other applications that we could have in the future of how time duration distortion or time duration is important, right? So, um, the light took it took four light years for light to reach Earth, and so that doesn't have to do with anything with gravity or or yeah. um, general volatility, but we know that we're seeing that star in the past. And if you go farther, we're actually seeing stars millions of light years in the past. Millions of light years. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so... So they could have been, like, blown up by the time... Like, by the, by the time we receive the light yes. from a star that's thousands of light years away, mm -hmm. it could be gone. Yep. And Absolutely. then, and then, t then the f same amount of time it took us, and the, the, the delay is going to be the same amount of time it's going to take us before we realize yep. that star's been gone. Exactly. And so this kind of raises the question. It bring it brings me to my the second property of time. So the first one we just kind of went over is time duration is not the same, um, which comes from massive objects, and it also comes from if you move very fast through space. We don't have to hit on that too much because it's yeah. effectively the same thing. You, if you move fast through space time will slow down to you the same way that it does as if you were moving through a massive object, like next to a massive object. Okay, but moving on to the second thing that we just kind of hit on is that time is local. Okay, mm. so what I mean by that, like we just said, we're seeing those stars, millions, you know, hundreds of millions, billions, just so far in the past, right? Okay, so if we're seeing those stars so far in the past, 
what does it actually mean to be now? Okay, so we're observing it in the past. What, is, what does now mean? What does it mean for us to see the stars like right now? You know, and you know, you obviously you say, okay, well, we're just seeing, you know, 10 years in the past. So like, yeah. we're just seeing, you know, we can just calculate that mathematically. Well, yes, but then consider the complexity of the universe. Consider yeah. how many stars there are in the universe. Mm -hmm. Consider how big the universe is. We don't even know how big it is. Yeah. Like, we really don't. It's an estimate. Right. And so to compute everything in relation to each other, because think about, like, things that are half the distance in between us, the, the time duration that it took for this light to get to there is different from to us. So they're seeing that star at the same point half you know, they, they saw it half the time. You know, let's say it, it takes yeah. a million years to get to us. Well, people in the middle see that star as it was 500,000 years ago, and we're seeing it a million years ago. And then when you start triangulating and, and, and doing all the relativity for everything, it's it's almost, it's just impossible, right? Mm, yeah. There's just no, there's no really con, there's no real concept of time as it is right now. And so where does that bring us? So the second property of time, that time is local, okay? Time is local. So the earlier we're talking about the the negligibility of of time as we perceive it between us, right? Mm -hmm. Nanoseconds is negligible. So let's say that we define a negligible amount of time as a tenth of a second. Okay. How we would say time is local is that everything within a certain length, based on how based on how fast light travels mm -hmm. and the length that it could travel in you know a tenth of a second. Everything within that bubble has an effectively negligible. Everything in that bubble has the same time, if you will. To so us. they they count their times. They count their duration of time the same. Right. In that it, bubble. Yeah. Everyone would have the same same time. So, but then once, so like I'm counting a second, like on this time bubble, I'm counting a second, like yo one, two, three, but in theirs, they might be counting a second, like one, two, three for like they just it's just a whole different pace and that's a wild idea right and yeah that's, that's crazy like that that blows my mind like it really does like mm -hmm. they, like it, it's like that is such a wild idea because yeah. think about like have you ever thought about time duration being different based on your location in space no. probably not like it's 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 a very hard idea honestly to wrap your head around and in the future like when we like you know space travel is you know, we already see like Elon. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's already got shout out to my man Elon Musk doing great things. We um, going to the moon, baby. GME. <laughs> he, if we have space travel in the future, you know, maybe one day, if we could travel to other places in the galaxy, the duration of time is going to be very important because we're going to have to get used to the idea that if you travel far enough away and come back. The people here on Earth are not going to be the same age. The mm. age duration will not be the same. I doubt a lot of people have thought about that when the it age, comes to space it travel. It will not be the same. Now, granted, it will have to be a fairly long distance, and mm -hmm. you will have to, it depends on the route you take because, yeah. you know, if you go closer to gravitational fields. But, like, go, we want, like, intergalactic travel. We want, like, right. s Star Wars. And, and when you, you know, so Star Wars, like, that, that view of everything being existing at the same time, that's not true. I actually haven't watched Star Wars, but I, I've watched, I mean, I've seen the movies. Like, the, every day, everyone exists and ages at the same time. Mm -hmm. In space travel, that's just not how it works. Right, they might just have found this a different way. <laughs> Maybe they're right. You Who knows who how? Who knows? Yeah, this, scientists just be talking, man. Not playing. Really? <laughs> and so, I, I just think that's such a an important idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, the third thing is entropy. Mm -hmm. So, what is it, we want to find, like, what in physics gives us time yeah okay so when you think about physics um think about a pendulum when a pendulum is swinging right if you see a pendulum a video of a pendulum swinging in reverse you would have no idea that it was moving in the past or the like if it was moving forward or backward through time right mm -hmm. so when we're thinking about that there's actually there's almost no models or equations in physics that give us a forward movement of time Right, because either either like going back and forward, it, that doesn't make a difference. We yeah. can't tell. Yeah. Um, there is one though, and it's in thermodynamics. So it's the second law of thermodynamics says that entropy um, increases with time. So mm -hmm. as time passes, entropy must increase. Mm -hmm. And you're probably wondering what the hell is entropy. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> 
Entropy, definitionally speaking, is the disorder in the universe. Okay. okay? You're like, well, okay, what, that sounds so ambiguous. Like, what, what does that mean? Let's, let's, let's take an example. Let's say I have a box of balls, okay? And in the box, I have a divider, and it, it divides the box in half. And on the right side, I have 10 blue balls. And on the left side, I have 10 red balls. Mm-hmm. We would consider that an ordered system. Okay, now if I put the lid on the box, uh, uh, actually if I take if I take the divide the divider out, put the lid on the box and I shake it up, and we open it back up and then we put the divider back in, you would expect that all of the balls would they'd be disordered, right? Yeah. They would have a they would be all mixed and matched and whatever, whatever. That's essentially what entropy is. It's the idea that everything in our universe, as time passes, becomes more disordered. Things do not magically separate themselves. It just doesn't it's just not how the universe works. Yeah. Right. And that's an important idea. And that is the only thing that gives our universe from physics, from a, a scientific standpoint, the, the motion, the order of time. Without, without entropy, we would have not, the past moving forward, moving backward, we'd have no direction. The mm-hmm. arrow of time would not be there. Yeah. And that's, that's a wild idea, right? Mm-hmm. Like think about like, we, think about what would happen if we didn't have time. It, it'd be like like what would you be able to do you, to be honest like, like don't even know like you, you don't like you if you couldn't remember things right because there's no true. time yeah it'd be like do you, oh, even yeah, exist? you know um they took over you know the revolution happened a while back what's a while back a while back yeah, well, <laughs> exactly right so that that and it's a very it's very important now one other thing about entropy that's very interesting is that let's say that I am with my friend. Okay. Yeah. We have this box of balls, same box, 10, 10 blue balls, 10 red balls. They have the divider in the middle. Currently, they're both separated. So 10 blue balls on the right, 10 red balls on the left. To me, the system is perfectly ordered based on the color of the balls. Let's say my friend, for example, is colorblind. Mm-hmm. He can't see the color differences. They just look gray to him. Yeah. So what is that? Is the box ordered to him? What does that even mean for him? They're just all gray. So that, that's kind of a weird question already. Like, what, what do we do with that? Mm-hmm. Now, let's say, for instance, that our, my friend can, he can perceive the size of the ball impercept, like imperceptibly to us different sizes of the ball. Mm-hmm. So there, there's my, minute differences in the sizes of the ball but they all look the same to me, my friend can see the, the differences. So there's, let's say there's two sizes, a small and a large one, but they effectively look the same to me. To him, the system will be ordered based on the size sizes of the balls, yeah. right? And let's say there's there's five small ones and five large ones in, in both red and blue. So there's five small in the red, five small in the blue, five large in the blue, five large in the red. When we mix up the box, He's going to define entropy as the size of the balls. Mm. I'm going to define entropy as the color of the balls. So it's like, so it's like depending on like your perception, like some, some, there's going to be people on, on the way we define, we define time in a one way, but then like people in a different sphere of time or people just somewhere else are defining time in a different way. And that's. Well, so let's think about, let's, let's run it back for a second. Think about entropy, right? So entropy, as we're moving forward through time, is constantly getting greater. And mm-hmm. Entropy is the disorder of a system. So if disorder in the universe is constantly getting greater when we move forward through time, what happens when we move backward through time? When we're looking through the past, if we're playing a video in reverse, everything is becoming more ordered, right? Mm. Well, is there a perfect order at some point? In the in the back, like, is there like why? Where did this order come from? Yeah. Why do we have this order? Why are we becoming more disordered? Who who ordered the universe? Yeah. Like, why, where did this order come from? That's a very important question, right? Yeah. Because like that's how we have time. Yeah. And without that order becoming more disordered, we would not have time. Right. That's a, that's a cr- and so where where is that order coming from? Was our universe perfectly ordered at the beginning? Mm-hmm. So when your mom's like, your room's not clean and it's disordered, you're like, Ma, it's just time. <laughs> It's not my fault. <laughs> exactly. You, so when we're looking back, that's, 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 a, that's a really crazy question. Is the universe more ordered? Is there perfect order in the beginning? Mm-hmm. And the answer is we don't know. But um, the physicist, Italian physicist, Carlo Rovelli, he has a hypothesis that the order of the universe 
because it's based on the eye of the beholder, right? So it's yeah. based on how we interact with the system, which means for me, I interact with the system based on color. Mm-hmm. My friend interacts with it based on mass or yeah. you know, size. Effectively, as a species, every human interacts with our, system, our environment in the same exact way. Mm-hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that we had to in- interact with it in the way that we are. It just means that's just how we do. We don't, we don't know why, right? And so what that suggests is that maybe there is no perfect order in the beginning. Instead, there's just more order in the past, and we're just viewing, we're interacting with the system in a way that there was more order in the past. So we're mm. seeing more disorder of a certain aspect of our, of our environment, of our universe, but there could be many other aspects that we don't know about that we just simply don't interact with. And so there's, you know, maybe that's a little too deep off the ledge maybe i'm kind of getting I'm, in I'm, the weeds a little yeah, bit yeah it's you you, you might have lost me right when they said balls and disorder and i was like All right, i got you disorder and seeing the way time is but no i got you okay we'll, we'll bring it back the that's that is a little maybe a little bit in the thickets but the the last thing i, w- I want to talk about is the the granularity of time so what does that mean we don't know if time is continuous or discrete so in a in a historical aspect we think time is discrete I mean, and we think time is continuous sorry we, 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 we always newton um when he thought of time he defined it as you know time flows irrespective of what we do mm-hmm. it's just this it's continuous, continuous flow of time is this why everything in calculus has to be like they're like a continuous function continuous <laughs> function because my man newton was like it just got to be just got to be continuous right and so we th- as a result of newton's ideas right because think you know newton he provided the base of so one man shaped the entire way we perceive. We, right. So we, define we perceive time as society as continuous because our education system is heavily based on based on Newton's ideas. As they, you know, he he was a great. Wow. Yeah, and that's a crazy. That's that's mind blowing. That's actually crazy. That's a, that's, a, that's like a side tangent. Like that's yeah. that's wild, right? Um, but the idea that time is discrete is not a crazy one. We actually um, the same physicist. He thinks that time could have a a a discrete there's a discrete amount of time so back to the movie reels we were talking about last Mm -hmm. episode instead of you know similar to how there is a there is a single frame there is a single frame in our life and and that's it's unbelievably small it's 10 to like the negative 44th seconds Mm -hmm. which is so small we get like our atomic clocks can only measure 10 to the negative 18th right yeah so but that's important because if time is discrete, that really does change the way we think about time, right? And, it, and it's, very, it's a very interesting thing to think about because we can literally think about the flow of time as the, the change in discrete frames or, or blocks as we talked about last episode of time. So it just makes it easier to like calculate things? It, it's just a different way of, of viewing things and it, it does have some ramifications on uh how so yeah, which uh, which way so i'm guessing like but the way we've mainly been going with is that it's continuous we've we we've viewed it as continuous mainly we have no hard evidence either way though we d- we simply don't know so That's have, the have they been have they been doing like have they have scientists and physicists been messing around with the idea of like it being discrete and doing like trying to solve problems that way yeah so they're they're working on um the, the, that physicist, same one, Carlo Rovelli, he's working on an I- idea called loop quantum gravity. It's, you know, mm-hmm. what th- I don't even know what that means, honestly. Yeah. It's a very crazy idea, but he, they're going so far as to actually, time is not even a variable in their equation. Their, their models. Time does not even exist. And the reason it's important whether time is discrete or continuous is because, and the short answer is, um, we have old views old models of how the our universe works we have we're trying to develop new ones on a quantum level and on a gravitational level so quantum being very very small gravity being extremely macroscopic very large our, our models don't mesh They're, they clash mm-hmm. they don't make sense when you try to throw them together we we do not have one way of explaining the universe we have yeah. multiple models of explaining different sizes Parts. of our universe yeah, right different size okay and so those different sizes have competing needs in terms of whether time is discrete or whether it is continuous. Okay. And so it's important we know whether it's discrete or continuous 
because it's actually going to prove some models correct and some models incorrect and will actually help us on our journey to try to find one unifying model to explain the laws of physics. Okay, so that was, I'm sure that was a mouthful. Again, that was, that was a whole lot of science. Getting, for those, for those, if you if you listen to that to this segment and everything been said, and you just regurgitate that to your physics professor or teacher, <laughs> a instant a, a he instant. He'd, he'd just be like, don't even come to the class anymore. We just gave you major major extra credit points. Those major are brownie points right point. there. there You're you welcome. Go. Project You're welcome. Listen to the one episode. Bam. Okay, so, so, so I want to get out of the uh, the nitty gritty, mm-hmm. um, and let's talk about. This is the very. This is the last thing I want to say. How, so we we generally view time as being existing outside of us, but you know, so like we, it is like if whether we're alive or not, time is it is it is a fundamental property of the mm-hmm. universe. We actually don't know if that's true, and many physicists, many philosophers think that time is inherently subjective. Time cannot be separated from your experience. Your experience of the universe mm. is innately connected so, to time. You, so, uh, so, so, uh, uh, what did we say this was? This, this just a, uh, a profound thought profound from thought. from Armelicus Milius. This makes me think. I, th- I think we talked about this before. That so time is just. What did I say? Something about the mind. Like time is just a. Con- is it a construct of the mind? Is it, that what yeah, you said? time is a construct of the mind. Like, so you, that's uh, that's what I'm hearing right now. Like, no, ex- and that's exactly what it is. That's that's exactly what people think it Hold is. On, I gotta it. make sure I plug in Armel- Armelicus Melius Melius Armelicus Melius correctly. Armelicus profound thoughts from Armelicus Melius. Time is a pro is a construct of our mind. All right, sorry, I just had to plug that in. <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> shameless <Not> plug. Shameless. <laughs> um. And so, like, that's a uh, that's a really fun because we always feel. I don't know about you. I kind of feel. You know, we feel as if something is missing when we explore time. Like, yeah. Okay. Like we have these properties of time. We've kind of gone over these different philosophies. We have like these different ideas. Time duration is different. Yeah. It's local. We have entropy. Da 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 da. Like, who cares? Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. You know, that's like most. You know. Yeah. The point in saying all that is that even when we know all of this, we still feel like something is missing. And the reason we feel like something is missing is because we're searching for a definition of time that exists outside of us that doesn't actually exist. Oh, it, I, I remember we were, yeah, yeah, we were talking about this because it was like, it was like, if we did not exist, there would be no no need for us to even understand time. Like, no one out, like, the universe itself would just continuously expand, right. will continuously, you know, burst, create oxygens, planets, and X, Y, Z. But they would be like, we don't really, time to, like time, time is not a thing. It's right. just. So time is, is inherent to us, right. right? And not, we don't actually know that for a fact, but there is a, there's a substantial amount of evidence um, to suggest that evolutionarily speaking, what you know i don't want to say substantial there are ideas that say that say that we evolutionary speaking developed we evolutionarily it, developed it, to experience and to use the change in entropy in our surroundings as a way to 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 have this property of time it as, makes sense and, and it does because think about what i said earlier right like what would no happen time. if you had no time if if we could not perceive the changes in entropy in our environment. No, our whole society we would, would not, not be able exist. To exist. Our whole we, society, like you wouldn't remember how to tie your shoe. You would not remember my name. You would have no concept of the past because you don't. You can't remember the changes that 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 happened. Mm-hmm. So you so okay because so, I'm I'm the, to make sure I don't argue this the wrong way because I feel like I could remember how to tie my shoe regardless if I knew what time it was. But you're saying that the that when we were first evolving, very you know premature human brain and whatever. Mm-hmm. Our ability to take all this disorder and everything helped us create time, but in ways it helped our brain be able to wrap around the idea of memory. Con- it, 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 I think I might have jumped the, the gun a little bit. The reason that's so important that we evolutionarily evol- that we evolved to to perceive the changes in entropy, which the changes in time, is because if we cannot perceive change in our past, we effectively have no memory, right? And think about someone who has Alzheimer's or dementia. They have mm-hmm. a good amount of memory left, mm-hmm. right? And I don't want to say good amount. It, I, that's kind of insensitive yeah. to family members of those people. But they, they still remember something. If you could not remember, if you had no memory of your experiences, 
you would have no information to draw upon. That's so true. So you would, when I say you, you wouldn't you, know like, to tie your shoe, I mean like you, you would not know your own name. You would be a vegetable. You literally wouldn't. And that's to go into why Alzheimer's and X, Y, Z and why people's memory loss. But I guess to conclude, like to understand that y'all, again, profound thought from Armelicus, <laughs> Melius, time is just a construct of the mind. Is it really? I don't know. I'm just a bootleg philosopher <laughs> who gave himself a name. But that that's actually a really insane thing to think about. Like yeah. that all this all the science and the right. mumble everything that we could have got you could have got lost in all that, mm-hmm. but to understand that like it's so important because it's yeah. help it's help it what makes us like continuous, like right. we couldn't evolve, we couldn't grow if we didn't remember exactly. if we didn't teach the people if we didn't teach our kids to right. remember and they those and I, I know we kind of got lost in the weeds or i got i'm sorry i got <laughs> lost in the weeds i apologize i felt like i was in a lecture boy i was sitting in that bit like yo I, should i be writing notes right now <laughs> i probably should i probably should <laughs> we, so we got lost in all those weeds so you could so we could understand the the ev- the scientific and philosophical basis for how time really could be innately simply a construct of the mind. mind and guys let's not let's not disrespect the weeds though because you probably learned some i know i learned something i can go tell like y'all if i went to like f- uh, a different whole different star system it's a different time i'm on a different time zone than y'all my time is different the more things but, you know but to conclude off i just want to say that my mind was absolutely blown my mind was absolutely fried i hope <laughs> y'all's was too and i guess I guess to end off the final send off, is there a question you want to leave the viewers with the people on the inst- on the TikTok live? Guys, guys, let us know. Do you think if you heard the uh, the philosophical stuff, do you think that we live right here right now? Is our reality now? Is our reality everything or is our reality? Is it simply all up here? What do you all think? Let us know. And uh, at the end of the day, everything is just subjective and the way you perceive life determines how you live your life definitely and that's it for today's episode of the adapt or die podcast make sure y'all stay tuned and uh first off we're gonna keep plugging in because we try we are young and we are trying to uh you know definitely grow something aod uh adapt or die the podcast awareness overcomes deception the clothing brand if you're watching the youtube right now me and Ben, we both got clothes. Ben got the exclusive secret society. Sorry, you, you guys see can't it. have this. I'm sorry. Yeah, but yeah, it, you, you'll get a version like this, but you in the can back. get this shirt, the AOD. This shirt is. I was wearing this all day yesterday. I had about eight people come up to me. Yo, that shirt is tough. Look, if tough. if you want to stand out, be different, have people you know call you out, respect you know, have that girl compliment you. Make sure y'all check out AODcompany.com. I repeat, AOD company.com thank you for joining us today's episode of the adapt or die podcast it's been a blast to have y'all learn and explore with us remember explore and adapt because that's the only way you're going to survive thank you for listening to another episode of the adapt or die podcast for more information about us follow us on instagram at adapt or die or find us on tiktok at aod podcast you can also watch the podcast on our youtube channel at aod co spelled aod co We hope you enjoyed this episode and as always, continue to explore and adapt.